Hey there, we are live right now with Speakers Magazine. We got Nikichi Taifa and Troy Johnson. Oh my God, this is a special show. So I'll tell you all about it. We're going to be talking about books. Obviously, we're going to be talking about books and Speakers Magazine, Nikichi Taifa. But we have never had Troy Johnson on. And Troy Johnson is like the African American version of Amazon. Okay, he's been at this for probably over two decades. So I'm, we're going to talk all about that right after this. Hey there. So the this is Black History Month. We've had Nikichi Taifa. She was on the cover in 2023 and then again in 2024 on a billboard. But this particular issue, Nikichi wanted to talk about her children's books as well as her, her memoir. But I brought Troy on because this is a special issue because Troy, she's top the list of AALBC. Uh, African American Literary Book Club. That's what that stands for. And Troy has been doing this. Troy, has it been two decades plus? Yeah, I started, I actually sat down to create the site in um, October of 1997 and oh officially launched in March of 98. So oh my we're, God. We're looking at uh, 26 years. 26 years. That is amazing. Thank you. Th oh, you know what? So that was when really a lot. Tell us what was going on in 1996, 1997 in terms of African-American books and African-American authors and the Internet, because people were scared to buy stuff online. I know that was probably part of it. Uh, well, you, you, you got that right. I actually started the website um, as an experiment to learn about e-commerce. Believe it or not, at the time, I was building websites for other people. And one of my customers said she wasn't making any money. And I quickly figured out it was because no one was transacting online. Mm -hmm. But I decided to um, create a site and I, I chose books, uh, not because I was you know, one of those avid readers who loved literature. In fact, I was largely ignorant of literature, um, but I created the site and a whole world opened up to me. And, and, and that's what has become my mission to this day of just sharing information about Black authors and 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 our stories uh, with more people, as many people as I can share it with. That that's my goal. Um, so I, so from a technology perspective, it was the early days. I um you know, every single page, you know HTML? nothing was good. Huh? HTML. Um, yeah, HTML. I learned it from scratch. Um, you know, the first website was purely HTML. There were no tools. There was nothing to help you craft this stuff. And, you know, I've just along the way learned more and more and I've, I've been able to keep up. But in terms of books, the, you know, what was out there, I mean, when I started the website, I really could capture all the books that were being published at the time. You know, in okay. other words, I was waiting for the next black book to come out. Mm -hmm. um, so while I said it, as an adult, I wasn't an avid reader, as a child, I was. And it was interesting. I heard an a interview with Nkichi in it, and she was talking about when she was young, all only books she read were Jack, um, Dick and Jane. And so I learned to read on Dick and Jane books. And I remember clearly the first time I, like it was yesterday, I might've been four or five, the first time I saw a book with a black character on it and how excited I was. And that was uh, a snowy day. And that book, was written by um, Ezra Jack Keats. Ezra Jack Keats. <laughs> and I'll, I will talk about um, that. Maybe I'll bring it up now. I mean, one of the things that I've done, one of the things that I do is, is research the industry. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've learned most recently is that when we look at the top selling Black children's books, and when I say Black children's books, I mean books with Black subject matter, you know, children's book about Harriet Tubman, for example. Mm -hmm. The best-selling books aren't written by Black people. 
What? And so, yeah, yeah. And um, and so what Definitely. you learn, and, and this is not widely known or discussed, and it's something that really should be probed in more deeply, because what you discover is that, you know, we're not telling our own stories. I mean, there are some very visible, high profile children's book authors, but they're, the, they're really the exception. They're not really the rule if you really look at it. And not only not only we're not telling our own stories, we are not profiting from them. Mm-hmm. And um, so the the work that um, Nkichi does is so super important because she does something that's very different, and she may not even be realize this and how different and important what she does is. She actually supports what I describe as the black book ecosystem. So mm. any author can say, hey, I'm on Amazon and buy my book there. But if you are truly supportive of Black books, Black people, Black story, you have to support the people who are behind these things. Yeah. So I know she does books with, you know, she does print runs with Black Classic Press. She promotes Black booksellers. She promotes Black... She is, you know, the fuel behind this. And... and and I'm going on, I'm starting to rant now, but. No, 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 no. We, we talked about black booksellers because in this particular issue, you know, this person here, Mon, Ramonda, right? From Mahogany Books. Yes. So Ram- her Ramonda and her husband. And Derek go Mahogany, Mahogany Books. Books and uh, they have a couple of stores. Uh, I remember the one they first opened in Southeast um, DC. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, and, you know, and they started out online and they're doing uh, great things now. So. You know, in fact, on, on my site, you'll find a list of well, you know, about 160 black owned bookstores. Wow. People often say, you know, why do you promote other bookstores or other booksellers to your competition? Um, yeah. But no, right. they are critical to the black book ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Without other booksellers, um, you know, we we won't have a, 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 the ability to sell, promote, promote our stories. And, you know, I, I think of that as reparations as well. I mean, we really have to take ownership um, of what we do. Yeah, I mean, it's no joke. I mean, it's, <laughs> so it's this is and real. This is, I mean, we, you know, yes. she is real right real. now like the 24th best selling author on the site. Now I have 8,000 authors profiled on the site. Oh, and my. the reason she is, Ms. Taifa is, the one of the top selling authors of all time on the site after over 26 years being online is because she's intentional about how she uh, sells her books. Mm-hmm. Sure, mm-hmm. she sells a bunch on Amazon, I'm sure, but she also sells through black booksellers. And she <laughs> also, and she also, so that does a, a few things. One, it helps support my business. And so through her efforts, I, I am indirectly able to help other authors. Mm. You know, it's much the same way. Yeah, I mean, it, it it all feeds itself. I mean, and indeed, Pam, we met each other through Paul Coates. Yes. So yes. Paul Coates has been in business far longer than I've been. You know, he's mm-hmm. uh, an iconic he's OG. In, mm-hmm. in the industry, you know, coming out of Howard. Um, and Kichi comes out of Howard. I met you through I think, Paul. I, I think you said you had him as a professor. Didn't you say that, Nikichi? Or you just knew him? No, not Paul Coates. Uh, but Paul Coates was connected with the Moreland Spring Garden Room at Howard when I was um, at Howard. But he was never a professor. But we interacted. We knew each other from way back then in the 70s. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, again, so if Paul's business doesn't survive and indeed thrive, he can't support and help others l- like myself and, and you, Pam. And I mean, it, it, it all feeds on each other each other we it's, mm-hmm. it's you know a virtuous circle we you know someone says once before you know either you you know you survive together or die alone something like that i mean yeah. at the end of the day we really have to support our own businesses and and that's why reparations on fire is uh, an aalbc best selling book i believe it's a four time aalbc bestseller um you know what? I believe it's a 10 time AOBC bestseller. Let me correct that. So it's made our list 10 times. And that says a lot. Nikita, it, that says it does. A lot. It, it really, because, really does. Because he's got almost 10,000 books 
on the site, right? Yeah, and like I said, it's, he's like, he's intentional about why he started AALBC, which is really, you know, African American Literary Book Club. Uh, encouraging people, I always say books are like the the roadmap to so many things that we want to do, possibilities and things like that. You could, Books can change your life. So I always have been intentional about representing Black authors, um, now Black speakers, because authors have to speak and speakers write. So those two go hand in hand, but the main thing is they're changing the world. So 26, 28, you know, almost three decades ago, internet was brand new. A lot of people weren't writing books. And so writing a book at that time, like you said, I can kind of find where the Black books, where the Black books were and put them on the site. Now the proliferation of Black books, tell us where we are now, how many pitches, I guess you would say, or how many books, I know you do some research. So how many books you think our African-American authors are being produced a year versus way back then? Well, a number of things have changed. One, yes, the internet did emerge, but the um, the, the start of you know digital publishing, you know, mm. so the number, I don't know, I don't know if anyone knows the number of Black books that are being published. And indeed, one of the goals of the African-American Literature Book Club is to one day um, capture all of those books. Um, so, I would suspect that the number has been increasing since, you know, since um, you was able to print books on demand. So, mm -hmm. there, but what makes my role and what makes what I try to do is help readers discover those books, discover the best of what's being published. Yeah. So we, um, so when I described in the in the '90s, sitting around waiting for the next book to come out. It's, it's like a fire hose coming at me. I, I, it is physically impossible for me to know about every single book that's being uh, published. Um, but, we, you know, myself and others, we look at, you know, as many books as we can. We try to select the best out of what's being published and promote those books. Mm -hmm. so, you know, there are, yeah. So we, cur we continue to curate our list. Um, the site as you mentioned, is I designed it from scratch. And because I designed it from scratch, I can do anything I want to with it in the sense that it's very different than other sites. Many sites, some e some booksellers just send people to the bookshop, for example. Mm -hmm. Others use canned solutions that are very limiting what you can do. But, you know, with AOBC, I can, you know, report on books and 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 aggregate books and 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 look at books in a wide variety of ways and some of those ways include you know really keeping track of um what genres books are in what um you know what awards books have won what our best sellers are and you know i combine that with video audio mm -hmm. um we book reviews and, and a wide variety of content and you do the email newsletter how many, how many is on your list right now? That list is just about 18,700. I, I actually just literally sent out something a few minutes ago. But <laughs> those, those are, that's a, and that's a clean list. So right, there are, right. You know, this, you're not spamming people. It's like people who want to know about what are the new black books out there? What are the brand new ones? What videos do you have? What awards and, and exactly, things like that? Exactly. I mean, it's, I mean, you may not believe it, but there have been times where half of the subscribers have opened the newsletter. So wow. the open rate of better than 50 percent is staggering. That is. And um, the and that's you know, that's another that's another thing that we don't celebrate. So if you know, if there's a platform that can consistently get anywhere between 35 and just over 50 percent of people are open, open up an email. So. 9,000 people will open up an ALBC email, hmm. you know, so if someone had that kind of consistent engagement on social, you know, everybody would be screaming it from the top of the top of the rooftops. The another thing that we have to do is celebrate our own platforms. Yes. So, you know, your, yes. your magazine, for example, you know, I'm working on figuring out, working on getting that on the site. Um, you just showed me the print version of it. So I just mm -hmm. learned about, it's all my fault. I've been sleeping on it. So that information needs to be celebrated. So mm -hmm. when, and, and Kichi does this. So I've seen her work where she talks about being in your magazine, being on your program. 
that's super important because what we tend to do is, hey, you know, I'm on social media, I'm on TikTok and, you know, look at how many people I got, you know, on TikTok. And what we're doing is amping up, supporting someone else's platform that doesn't, they have no interest in us. They're only interested in what we can provide for them. Mm -hmm. And I can give you a, a bazillion anecdotes and stories about how, you know, really social media has kind of gutted, um, you know, black indie platforms. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's we and it's large and a lot a large reason for that is because we constantly pump up and promote um, other the other, other mass platforms. platform. Yeah. And we I have to pump up and promote our own platforms. And that's important. You know, when and, I... and, and want people to understand too, it's not um in the Kichi, you could you could say this too, that we don't the black press and and anything that we own black, it's not that we're going to be apologetic about supporting our own because a lot of people are like, Well, you know, what no, we have to if we want to grow. So the Afro, which is in Washington, DC, the Washington Informer, uh you know, Kathy Hughes, obviously she started in DC. Those are different platforms that, yes, there we go. There we go. <laughs> One of the oldest African-American. Actually, that was a McKinsey's grandfather that started that newspaper. Wait, uh, say that again? F Vashti yeah. McKenzie. It was her grandfather that started the Afro. Really? Yeah, Bishop Vashti McKenzie, one of the first African-American, uh, or the first women uh, in the, the AME church. <laughs> Her grandfather. Oh, okay. And she oh. worked there. She said she worked there when she was in high school. And then basically she started working for Kathy Hughes. And, you know, our ecosystem is what is going to make us stronger. And so we want to celebrate each other. We want to celebrate our own books. We want to celebrate Black booksellers. We want to celebrate Black uh, e-commerce sites. We do want to do that because that grows it. And it inspires the generation behind us. So we don't want to whitewash it and it's like, oh, well, it doesn't matter, you know, whatever, whatever. Then they'll go and they'll go work for someone else and then eventually they'll sell and then they don't have any legacy of what they have exactly. did, you know. So that I always say we want to build legacy just like within the generations of any other business. So that, that is why I'm so pro all the time. You know, it's almost like, you know, can Pam say that anymore? Yeah, I say that all the time. This is... We're the official magazine of Black Speakers Network. We, you know, we promote African-American books. We, uh, I wanted Troy to be on because Troy is always like behind the scenes, right? So a lot of times I wanted people to know who Troy Johnson is. It's been around like, this is like, he's the GOAT. Like, seriously, when you hear, Nikichi, when you hear him talk about this, you know, it's like, he ain't new to this. He's just true to this. That's his, that's his thing. Just like you with reparations, you know, the recent years people have been talking about the last, really like the last four really like been on fire, but you first published this book when? Well, actually reparations on fire was published in, in 2021, but it, the root of it came from this book, Reparations, yes. yes, which was published in 1987. Troy, you don't even know anything about this. One. It was co published with uh, two persons, uh, Chokwe Lumumba, whose son is now the mayor of Jackson, Mississippi, and Imari Abubakari Obadeli. They were my mentors. So this was back in 1987 when nobody was seriously talking about the issue of uh, reparations. And this book, I found this came out long before the internet, long before any and everything. But when I saw this book selling on Amazon for like $8,000, and I'm saying, what <laughs> in the world? This look that had been out of print for decades was never even on the internet. People were selling it. I hope no one was buying it for that. So that's why I decided to um, republish um, publish Reparations on Fire, bringing it up to date, but including as an appendix to that, this small book. So this was an appendix uh, to this. And this book I found out in 2020, along with my children's book, Shiny Legacy, I found out that they were on the banned book list of the Central York, Pennsylvania School District. And this book, my children's book, Shiny Legacy, had been out of print in decades. This book was first published in 1983. Okay. And when I say, how in the world did my books end up on a banned book list? 
And, you know, how did they even get it? So that's when I decided, uh, Troy, around the time when I met you, to republish my works and make them available for a new uh, generation. And technically, this book was part of this book, so both of these were men. And this was my book that came out in 1980, I mean, 1993. This was called The Adventures of Kojo and Ama. And this was my response to the white Dick and Jane Spot the Dog books that I grew up in my childhood. We have Kojo and Ama, an African-American brother and sister, and their black cat, Sheba, who brings good luck. <laughs> Okay. I love it. I love it. And yeah. you are, and, and so your background really is because you were a teacher. Yeah. So, I, you know, most folk really, uh, first of all, Troy, I am very intentional about steering people to buy black. So I do a lot of speaking engagements and all throughout COVID and even now that everything is on Zoom, when I'm doing a speaking engagement online, I always put the direct link to AALBC.com in the chat. So all people have to do is just click on it. And all five of my books you have, um, Shining Legacy, The Adventures of Kojo and Ama, Three Tales of Wisdom, um, my memoir, <laughs> Black Power, Black Lawyer, and my reparations book, Reparations on Fire. So all of those are on AALBC, AALBC and I intentionally steer people um, there. Of course, it's very easy for people to just go to Amazon and all like that. But I send people first to um, the Black Connection, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. on my Black Power Black Lawyer website, I had a whole list, I'm presuming it's still there, of different Black bookstores across the country that I linked to. Most of them probably don't even carry my book, but I, I link to it so that people can go there. And if they don't get my book, it's fine. There's a whole potpourri, like you said. There's so many Black books out there now. When I started, let me say, there was Lucille Christian, Clifton. There was Eloise Greenfield. There was Ezra uh, Jacks Keith. That, that was about it. There wasn't, but so Sharon Bell Mathis. But there wasn't, but so many. And Eloise once told me, uh, Miss Eloise, and then, you know, she was in D.C. and I was in D.C. We were inviting groups together and all like that. She said, when you teach your stuff is so preachy. And I knew what she was talking about. I mean, children, but well, you're not supposed to be preachy and all. But, you know, I am me. So this is about famous black heroes from Malcolm X. And today is February 21st, the day that Malcolm X I was assassinated to Harriet Tubman, to Susan Louverture, and Demma Beast, and Marcus Garvey, and Paul Robeson, and all like that. Because I did not learn any of this myself growing up from the books. I didn't, I didn't either. I didn't learn about that till adulthood. So I wanted to make sure the youth of today, I don't consider myself a real, I'm a lawyer. Okay, that's why most folks don't even know about these things that I uh, 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 write because that it hasn't been what I pushed. And that's why Dr. Pam, I said, I'm, I'm going to be on the cover. I want to uplift the children's book. Yeah. People don't know that part uh, of mm -hmm. me, the cover of, of Speakers Magazine. And the billboard has me holding up all of my books. I was yes. just, uh, so proud about that. That was intentional. It's something about a lawyer because this one, she's, she's actually in the same issue as you as well, Deidre Moore. And yes. so Deidre is from me to you, the powerful storytelling of its inherent generation wealth and African American story. She's an attorney, yeah. now running for judge, but wrote a children's book. It's a children's yeah. picture book, right? Yeah. But it's really talking about history. And she did it from the standpoint that she wanted her young son to really know more about the history that wasn't being told. That she saw his books and she was like, Yeah, this is not this is not enough. And she did the research. I guess that's what lawyers do, right? They do all the research. They find all the cases. They make the point. And she wrote this book. And that's what I think that I I just love about, and, and she speaks on it and trying to make a difference. So lawyers are always about justice. Obviously, that's the, the main thing. So you can see why it's a natural for them to want to spread the information about our history. Why is it important to know and either one of you can answer that. It's Black History Month. Why is it important as we wrap up to know our history? What is the main reason why Blacks should know their history in America? Which way are you going to start and then I'll bring up the beer. <laughs> All right, that sounds good. I, I'm going to approach it from a different angle. Um, 
so why is it important? It's obviously important, and I'll let Kichi speak directly to that. But what I will say is, you know, despite all the technology that we have, uh, despite all of you know the access to data, more information than ever before, it is still exceedingly difficult for the word about black books to get out. Again, mm. ignoring the literally uh, the handful of authors whose books we all know about that sell well. There are a tremendous number of excellent books that just aren't being promoted very well. And there's a good reason for that. And the reason is that we really have to be more active in promoting the booksellers that are going to be promoting these books. So the, you know, so the books that you're going to find on AOBC, and we're actually working on a way to help elevate and amplify black books. And it's a big project, and I'll make it public, we'll make it public in the next few months. I'll promote it. What we're going to, <laughs> thank you, but mm -hmm. we're going to, in a more structured and organized way, amplify uh, Black books. And it's, you know, it's, it, it will be an unprecedented effort. And in order for it to succeed, we will need people to help elevate it. So when we talk about the books that Nkichi has, the children's book that she's done and the one that you just um, highlighted with us, you know, they're not going to make the New York Times bestsellers list, which is what many booksellers care about. So they buy the books off that list and they keep it moving, but they don't probe deeply. They have no motivation to. Mm. And we have a motivation to do that, to uplift the books that aren't getting the attention that they deserve. And so that's that's one of my goals. And and why that's important, I'll let Nkichi ex explain why that's important. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So well, I'm going to let Nkichi is so very important and so very critical. When you look at the word history, that's what it is. That's what it is today, it's his story. <laughs> we don't need to be dealing with his story. We need to be dealing with our story and definitely not his story, i.e. history that's only one month out of the year. Our story is 365 days out of the year, every single day, talking about what we talk about, um, uh, uh, black folk. There's an African proverb that goes something like a, a tree without, a, a, a person without a knowledge of their history is like a tree without roots. Um, both have no water, they have no substance or so something along uh, those lines. So that's what studying about the past does. We can see even today, the reason why they are banning books out there, banning black books, banning the teaching of true uh, history because they don't want us to have a knowledge of, uh, of ourselves. And that mm -hmm. is what ALBC, Speakers Magazine and all of these other entities that are out there are seeking to do to smash that a whole paradigm and make sure that generations that come after us have a firm knowledge of their past so that they can um, righteously go forward into the future. So black history is so, so very important. We need to take it out of the years and bring it into our, the hours 365 days a year. Mm -hmm. That's it. That is it. NikichiTaifa.com. Uh, you can find more of that. I mean, she, her her TED Talk is on the site. I mean, she is just speaking all over the place. So one of the things that uh, people, when they hear you, they say your energy is contagious, that you want to learn more, that you want to do more. So not just learn it, but you, you are you activate. You activate people to want to do more. So I appreciate that. That right there i'm just gonna say that's like a mic drop because that is so true because if we know our history um a lot of the the ills of our society and the ills in our community will go away because you really know who you're who you are who your true self is and so i appreciate all of that as well troy that is um when you get to the point where you're going to do your new thing because you know you, you're you kind of like you kind of hinted about it but we definitely want to support you uh, there are so many. I remember Black Planet back in the day uh, when that was around. And, uh, you know, it could have people said that could have been like the new the Facebook or whatever. I mean, but there's so many other things that um, in terms of African-American technology, things that we can support and endorse. Speakers Magazine, we are partnered with Black Speakers Network. We partner with PitchDB, which is African-American. We, we partner with Talk, Talk About, which is Black. -owned. I mean, so in order for this ecosystem to grow, we've got to be intentional. It started with me, um, you know, just 
understanding that the more I spend my money in my own community, it'll come back to me. Even if I'm buying a car, I may not can buy from a black, you know, manufacturer, but I can definitely buy from a black auto dealer. Right. Yep. So, you know, because, because that, that, that does help as well. And so when I see people and they pull up in their cars or whatever, and the first thing I think is like, well, I wonder, I wonder where they bought this car, who they bought this car from. Because yeah. they had to buy from a salesperson. Was the salesperson black? Did the salesperson, you know, I'm saying like feed our own families. Like what, what, what have some consciousness. That's all I'm saying. Just have some yeah. consciousness. All right. I'd like to add one other thing. And this speaks to uh, the banning of books. We are literally in, in terms of books, we are literally in a uh, period of reconstruction. Mm. You know, the, the banning of books is really a, in a backlash to, you know, the, the support um, that was, you know, given to black booksellers, uh, you know, immediately after George Floyd's murder, you know, on the heels of the uh, Obama presidency. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what we're looking at, we're in the throes. We're really, we, we're, we're witnessing, you know, folks just reacting to all of the support that, um, and progress black people have made, and that progress. threatens people. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's, you know, so this is what really what we're dealing with. And unfortunately, if you're not reading, if, if you consume news solely through social media, you're being lied to. You know, that, you know, I, I, I don't even live in Baltimore, but um, I, I subscribe to this newspaper and, and generally a couple of others simply to be better informed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's important that, you know, we pay to get these things because information is not free. You know, news is not free. You know, we've been programmed to think that, you know, you just go online and you should be able to get everything for free, but it costs money to produce uh, news. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you think of our situation as, you know, in the same manner that, you know, um, Southerners reacted to, um, um, you know, Black people, you know, after slavery ended and, reversed all of the freedoms that we were given and, you know, literally tore people out of the Congress. Um, you know, that that's where we are in terms of books. So they're that's banning up. That's they're, a good analogy. No, it, that I never thought about it that way. That yeah. is so true because right after that, it was the worst period because they got, we got all the freedoms. We did get the 40 acres and the mule, but you know, at that point we had freedom. And then from there was, it was horrendous because of the backlash, backlash. of the things. Backlash, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have to fight. We have to keep marching on, keep doing the thing, keep Probably doing the darn be. thing and being <laughs> intentional about it, being intentional, being louder about it. That's one of the main things, being louder about it and just really making sure that you're supporting. You know, when you see another African-American that is doing good, you know, support them. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, I said, it's nothing to subscribe to their newsletter and then maybe just forward it to a friend. I mean, that doesn't cost you anything. And then <laughs> word of mouth. I mean, you know, Pam, Dr. Pam, I found out about you from word of mouth. I mean, I'm just saying it's so very important that we pass on to other people uh, 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 what helped to bring us to uh, success. Everything that you see about me today, Joy, all the stuff that she, a lot of that is a product of what I learned from Dr. Pam Perry. Okay, she put, made sure I had all of the products in, in place so that I would be able to take advantage of opportunities that mm -hmm. came along and, 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 you know, and came about. I didn't even know that you two had a connection at first. So it's oh, all very, yeah, I mean, you, you know, um, that, that you had a connection with, you know, um, uh, you know BC. So it, it's all interconnected because we are family, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. That is it. Yeah. And that, and families it really, you know, besides being Black History Month, you know, whenever, when all of this is trending, you want, we know that it's 24 seven, it's all the time, it's what we live. And so we're just trying to make sure that we're doing that. So speakersmagazine.com, you can read the issues for free. You can watch the videos for free. All I ask is that you share and hit the share button. Let other people know. You see her videos, it's, you know, the video that's embedded on the cover in the key, I believe is the TEDx talk that's on there, which is on the TED, TED stage. Uh, but, uh, you know, make sure that you're sharing it and then making sure that you go to AALBC, sign up to be on the newsletter, get their, their, the books from there. It doesn't cost you 
anything to sign up for the newsletter and to get the newsletter and to share the newsletter and to follow them on social media. Those are some of the things that you can do so that you can actually be aware and share the share the information out. That's all I say. Information is power. Absolutely. But it's it's got to be it's got to be shared. Can't keep it a secret. So you guys, it is it is actually uh, here it is. Lasha, oh my God. Yes, of course. Lasha says our books are important. We have to tell all the readers. So Lashonda Hoffman Lashonda. has been in the space and in the game as well. So yeah. I know Lashonda Hoffman. She, is, she really loves a lot of the fiction books. So she's really like a big mentor for all of the, the African-American um, uh, books in that in that space. So that is it. Hey, Lashonda. So thank you so much for joining us today and, and listening in. So you guys, I'm gonna let you guys go. But thank you all so much for joining. Troy, I, you know, you know, I had to wrestle you down to get you in here. Okay. <laughs> all right, Nikichi, this is interview number three that we've done. But you know, we're, we're winding down to Black History Buzz. So thank you so much. Thank you thank so much. You. All right. Enjoy. God bless you guys. And I'll all talk right, with you all later. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> so speakers magazine go to speakersmagazine.com get the magazine read it uh, blackspeakersnetwork.com aalbc.com all of the things that you want to do to really move your community forward support it that's all i'm saying just support it so with that i am pam perry and i'm out of here <music>